All right. Welcome, everybody. Episode 94. Appreciate you being here, tapping in. Uh, so honored to have Mario back. And we're just going to talk. No plans for anything specific, but just a lot of people really appreciated our talks in the past and want to keep it going. So how's it going, man? How's your day? Man, it's a hot day. It's hot where I'm at. It's like 106. Oh, dude. I, can't that's even like... <laughs> I know. I mean, we have a lot of rivers and lakes around here, and that's really nice. But um, it's so funny before I just uh, I, I knew I was going to go on this big trip to Peru. Right. I've been sharing. And um, so prior to that, I wanted to make sure everything was good because when I got back, I knew it'd be blistering hot. So I went to go get my air conditioning checked and make sure it was good. And yeah. man, that shit's broken down. I went to get it fixed. They couldn't fix it. So I'm yeah. back now and my air conditioning's not working. So I'm just trudging. Around. So I can't even can't even go anywhere because it's too hot. <laughs> So I just yeah. stay, I just stay at home, man, and just swim and just go outside and enjoy the trees. And I just, I have to nice. wait till the sun goes down before I can go out and buy food and <laughs> anything. Yeah. Oh man, that's wild. My friends in the ganja farming world, that's certain parts of the Oregon are just so hot all summer. They they have to just work at night. You know, it just gets brutal. You have to hang out by the river all day. So yeah, man, brutal. Yeah, no, and then the fires, you know, they're coming down on Oregon. Oh. Well, tough. Uh, some of my buddies in Oregon are going through that shit. And then uh, California as well. There's a yeah, top of fire not too far from here. That's, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's intense. Well, good for you in Montana. Like, you guys are good. I know it's coming for you soon, but so far, yeah. <laughs> you guys are good. It's mellow, yeah. It's been rainy and stormy. And it, uh, it's powerful out here, though. It's always, I'm surrounded by mountains, and a lot of storm systems are always moving through. So, I really appreciate that that I get seasons of such intensity and that they're, you know, but it is tough. Winters are long. So it, it reminds me, right, of the, um, especially the first two books, man, where, where Carlos would be subjected by Don Juan to like just being outside <laughs> and, and just learning to cope with the elements, like his own assemblage point in relationship to nature, what was happening. Right. Some of those parts I'll never forget, man. There was that one, I think, where the wind was coming and Don Juan started freaking him out, you know, about the power of the wind. And he they had to run, right? And they had to, like, <laughs> I'll never forget that, man. I read that too young. And I was like, what's going on? That's <laughs> too much. Yeah, it was a lot. That's scary, you know? kind of is. It opens a big door of what's possible. And if you're on psychedelics and you're open to that, and you start to play with what that might mean that the wind is conscious and that it's coming for you and how to like interact with it and tease it. And, and women do call the wind when they're in their power, they'll eventually reach a point of being willing to purify on such a level. They literally open themselves up to the wind and they have a massive healing occur, a total transformation. So these, these things are real. Like Carlos was trying to convince Don Juan that, Oh, these, when the wind is caused by temperature changes and the Coriolis of what, you know, all the different pseudoscience that he, you know, Don's like, oh, oh, really? Are you sure? <laughs> like, kind of with it, like he was disappointed. He was pretending that like Carlos was explaining something to this poor old Indian that didn't get it. <laughs> he, he just baited him into this hilarious moment where he just fucking turned it on him dude and exposed what a fucking ignorant arrogant arrogant person he was just for even assuming <laughs> that this you know pagan could even comprehend what a university educated individual is it, it still goes on to this day we're dealing with the very same thing all the time people are finally coming around to the energetics but if you don't have a phd if you weren't indoctrinated this projection onto you is just like you're worthless and it's perfect. It's a cool, it creates the perfect conditions for our obstacle course. It's over, man. This whole game of specialism, you know, where you have to major in one particular thing and be the best at it. That yeah. isolative, like super narrow focused delusion, yeah. you know, pseudoscience of the past however many years. What is it? 90, 120 or something. Who knows? <laughs> All the resets. But um, yeah, that's over, man. That's over. It's the time of the generalist. Because like, survival is, you know, once these systems, these structures start fully coming down, like yeah. we'll, we'll all be surviving in, you know, the wilderness, you know, of this, you know, really learning how to survive again, you know. 
Well, that yeah, Doctor Berlando says it'll be the tradesmen. You know, the the knowledge, the place where people will be, you know, the most. It's it's going to be the people that have been building shit and fixing shit and yeah. dealing, with, dealing with actual hands on, and that's a really powerful thing to open up to is that we're all capable of remembering and tapping into those skill sets like wood. We've yeah. always worked with trees. Trees are magical. They'll teach you how to work with them. Like I'm a woodworker and it's psychedelic, man. The trees are, they might be cut down, but there's still consciousness there. There's still energy and detail and um, being able to, to put wood together in, in really sick joinery. Um, but so the people that come together that gravitate toward that kind of work are end up being people that really enjoy life you know and i mean there's also the alcoholism and the, i mean it's extreme it's I it's extreme yeah, it scene right but uh, when they're at work they're laughing and hooting and hollering and throwing shit and it's so much different than the office right so i kind of look forward to more of that. i like that's kind of why i like montana too it's just more like Oomph. like people are doing shit you have to get through the winter you gotta like fucking yeah you gotta work yeah i've been through that before man when i lived in, in north northern california humboldt i mean you gotta cut your wood yeah you, know, you gotta make your own fires you're in tinder you know you gotta um you gotta prep for the winter with all that wood each season is an initiation you know of some kind good man to chop wood carry water on some level if it's sweat lodger whatever it is to keep working. I think people lose that relationship and, and yeah, they seek a way. I mean, I struggled with my injuries where I got, I was just, you know, projected fear into returning to physical labor again, because I had an association with getting injured, but I had to undo that because it was actually was stress. And it was, it was, it was inflammation. It was the food I was eating that was causing my body to not be able to thrive in the environment you know, with all the stress and deaths and my mom died. And, but when you, when you don't know how to process emotion or grief, you know, when you're not skilled and resourced, a construction job can, a stressful construction career can destroy you. You know, I was watching people get the stress just accumulates and that's how we age. We, whatever career we find ourselves in, it can consume you. And we call it falling into the trenches you don't ever want to go into the trenches with the people that are comfortable with their life because they've just settled, you know, and it's kind of, it's there in every career. It's there in every situ, even in the truth community, there's just, or in the jam band community, the band's doing so well, they're thriving, they kick it and then they make it big and they just go into autopilot. And it just happens with every cool thing that there is typically. So finding a way to not fall into any of these little, these, these traps that show up. Um, one aspect of that I want to share uh, because I, I go through that and what happens too is they recognize you if you're not in that zone that they're in if you're not in that zone of like this is my work and I'm yeah. oh, focused on it it's it's very serious you know and I have to <laughs> you know what I mean I have to be the best at it and we have to really do it this way and that way you know and I do my job right like these, these last years that I was doing a certain type of work and you know, teaching and, um, you know, people get upset, man. They, 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 they look at me and they're like, oh, he's not working as hard as we're working, yeah. but he's getting all his work done. So what's going on here? There's something wrong here, you yeah. know, and it's indirect and they don't even know, but I'm being attacked because yep, I go about it a different way. I got a different energy. I got a different focus. Me too, man. And I just, I get attacked, man. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, you don't have to know anything about you. You can keep it all secret. You know, they don't know I'm into this or that. I don't say nothing, yep. but they read it all over me, man. Like they're reading my astral body. Like it's all there tattooed, you know, yeah. and cool. there's nothing I could do, man. There's this just, they're just too aware of it. You know, <laughs> all I can do is do the best I can, but eventually it's just, they push me out. They push. Sure. Me out. Wow. Yeah, dude. What a good thing to be conscious of. And, I experienced the same thing and they they sense my freedom and that, that I'm not willing to take on the weight and the stress of, of the life that they've taken on. And they find it a threat energetically on a subconscious level. So they don't even know why, you know, or what it is that, that they're triggered by, but it's, it's, 
So I, I did eventually learn how to counteract that. I got, I got ahead of the curve. I got, I figured out how to see ahead of it and catch it and create the conditions to where at least I could write it out with at my own choice and not get pushed out. Yeah. Yeah. Like I found like, and I would, I would just, it's an energy management thing. I would know when I needed to give a little extra and, and then nice. or, or make it seem like I cared or say the, the thing at the right moment. You know, I started just playing the role just for the fun of it. Yeah. And then it, it things got a lot freer. But yeah, there's been so many intense times where, because the universe is going to teach you and me and people that are here to to really take in the the process. They're going to give us all the appropriate people and situations. We're we're led in it's like pre contracted meetings and events and appointments almost. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you you know I mean the, the pe when people when when you're not somebody that's going to change artificially the artificial environment will reject kind of like jason's premise that we're going to get ejected by being errants like that the illusion can't contain you and that's like a micro version of that is you're just getting pushed out and it's good that you are adjustable and acquiesce and can constantly resource and continue to you know find another way forward it's like you know what it is man it's like it's like recognizing the same characters in your movie, right? That that are just different actors, you know. Yeah. But it's the yeah. same like plot line. It's the same characters. You're not done with it, so it's just different actors coming in, and then you're dealing with these energies. And like you said, there's ways, um, and there's and, and I do that. I mean, I say I get pushed out, and and I, and and I do, but it's an energetic thing, and it's also me not coming in and energetically taking over with my energy. And letting mm -hmm. them know that I'm here, I know what I'm doing, and yeah. you know, pushing that a little before settling down. Because yeah. so, you know, sometimes I'll get lazy and I won't do that, and then I'll settle into it and I'll be trying to prove myself the whole time. You know, like what am I doing? That's mm -hmm. not. I, sh I should have just came in, you know, put in my put in my stake in my 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 area, my my space. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. That's it. You know. Don't question, no need to question, you know. I know what I'm, I have my integrity and I'm following it. So so yeah, man, it's been it's it's cool that you nuance that that little aspect, that that really important aspect of life that we are we are explorers and we're and we're pushing forward. We're not just settling into some kind of zone where we're like, okay, we're just gonna go on autopilot. That's not gonna happen with us. Right. So we're always moving through the energy. Yeah. And we're always doing our Akita. We're always dealing with the under and we have to do it that way. Otherwise, because they're all getting stuck. Autopilot is just being stuck in the energy and settling with it and to become calcified and brittle with it, you know? And that'll and as you said earlier, that'll 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 break you because that'll that's stress that's building up. Yep, yep. Stagnant energy. Uh it, it, it's actual on the luminous cocoon it becomes crusted it's like a it hardens that's why people age the way they do you'll notice some people age so much faster than others there's just energetic explanations for everything you know and it's just the, the, this this there's just so many ways people could transform themselves if they'd be willing to do the slightest thing that's outside of their syntax outside of their patterns but people get more and more uncomfortable the more you know they become that energy builds it's it becomes more confronting to face it and, and try to get it to break up and and redistribute it and so yeah it looks my life looks chaotic to people like what the fuck how many states have you lived in how many fucking jobs and places <laughs> like, like me man yeah like it's like i yeah i'm listening and i get sent into these crazy situations and they're not easy and they look they are a little bit it does look reckless i people are like dude you need to i i i would love to i'm down i'm not afraid of it but I'm not, <laughs> you know what i mean so uh, trying to be open and and flexible uh, it, it ends up you know i i everything looking back on the things people said oh why why did you do that why you could have done this and that i don't see it like that i think everything that we do was a necessary stage and that if we can just forgive ourselves 
that we can come out of this idea that we've done anything wrong at all. And I just don't think people know how to do that. Nobody's guiding them to just stop, to, to just come out of that story. And it's so much self-judgment and it's all tied to judging others. And it just, it just binds the energy up again, like nobody. So you, you get caught in these communities or these trenches with people and they start, you know, even your family, how they perceive you limits your ability to become free if you let it. If you hang out in a community too long or at a job too long and people start to project onto you who they think you are, right? That makes it more difficult for you to be perceptually liberated. So Carlos was trying to point this shit out to everybody. He's like, you got to leave your family. And everyone's like, what? Yeah. He's like, here, you got a ghost. You got to disappear so they, so that they don't even know what the fuck to think. Just like, <laughs> just, just like totally fuck them up so that they like, give give up on you and so that they'll stop projecting how how do we get out of you know but he was so extreme he was shave your head you know the inorganics are feeding off your vanity like <laughs> right. it's not really culty right because they they took it up with the booze, you know? yeah <laughs> that's crazy man that's not crazy but you know that's the, the ex extreme uh linguistic kind of verb conjugation i like to use sometimes but um you know what it is man it's like you said it though, because before anyone else was really saying this, Castaneda was saying this, and what it is, it's like these are solidified egregores, right? Like just giant clouds of fucking control that yeah. just take take a human being like a like a mango and just fucking crush it until there's no more soul left. These yeah. are it, it's just it's not even them. They're controlled by whatever you know in um in transurfing they call it um. Uh, uh, pendulums yeah just fucking control human beings man that's it that's their purpose yep. you know and you're and you can go outside of that by by like you're like castaneda was saying like i oh, don't don't fucking worry about like like really fuck with their projections of, yeah. like play with that yeah. like and, and and they and once they see you and find you they're, they're just like like you said they're like what the fuck are you doing with your life i haven't heard from you in this many years or you know what i mean like they're starting to get rearranged their perception by your own decision to, you know, to decide how you're, how, how you're seen or not seen or whether you're present or not. It's, you're not even fucking doing anything but your own purpose. And it's going to fuck with them. It's going to fuck with their egregore, with their control mechanism, whatever that is, man. Yes, sir. It works. It, it, it's kind of brutal. It's a little almost an Indian, old Indians, Don Juan was pretty crude. The jokes were pretty extreme. Uh, they were pretty hilarious. And so Carlos took that on too. And he would, he, he made his apprentice go through just very difficult situations in front of everybody. You know, he would just expose them and in the most brutal ways. I remember, uh, man. I mean, you read some of the latter books and like, Carlos would find himself in these situations. And what the fuck? What am I supposed to do? And there'd be people around. <laughs> be like, I don't even want to, you know, I'm not even going to say it. You know, some of them are so dark and intense, you know. But I remember reading it going, what the fuck? Oh. <laughs> just like set him up for this and up for that and seeing what he does. <laughs> yeah. It's like throwing a kid into the water and seeing if they can swim. And then you jump in and save them right when they're fucking at the edge. He was dying all that he was just letting them die and then because the assembly just when I moved too far or became too rigid he would start to like his his energy would all kinds of strange things happen in the, in the physical world based on the energetic so some people go through energetic shifts that create uh illness instantly they go through you know a sudden discovery of a of a complexity that 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 they can't let go of so he would almost die out of fear he would almost literally turn him turn himself into uh he would start to crack and uh fall apart energetically so don juan had to bail this guy out over and over and over but he took on that responsibility because spirit had told him to work with this guy ruthlessly to go to just you know uh throw him throw the whole thing at him especially the power plants because he was so dense yeah. that they didn't have any other way to go about it and you know, so that's what I, I don't want people to feel that they have to do. Most people aren't dense like Carlos. There's a totally much 
energetically healthier way to get to these places slowly and carefully over time more naturally i love i love a couple of books later when he was like when it got you know when the other the other um students were there and carlos was no not carlos don juan was saying something to the effect of yeah so and so is not using you know not choosing these, these plants and so so's not using them and so and so's not and he's like what i thought you had to use them They're like no man just you because <laughs> you're fucked right you're so stuck <laughs> you know that that we needed that to you know open you up so you could experience but yeah man people people don't often get it i mean i get the same thing a lot they're like yeah. oh, you went, oh you went to peru you must have did some ayahuasca fuck no i didn't do any fucking ayahuasca not not that it's a bad thing hey maybe it's for you but i don't yeah. need that to open up man i was yeah. open up prior to getting there i was yeah. there before i got there and i prepared exactly. my way awesome yeah dude beautiful it's going to be that people are going to really start to get this. You know, there's been a lot of people avoiding themselves by going to the medicine and going to the medicine and going to the medicine. And it's just, it's the, the work's been right in front of you the whole time, just sitting there at home. All the things that we're avoiding doing or all the decisions we, we dance around and it's confronting. And I have a whole plethora of my own just dynamics I'm avoiding about myself, but you go slow you find a way to find strike a balance, but, and you listen, I'm not saying people shouldn't take medicine. If you really, if you feel really called and guided, you know, and if you're going to do it, have the time of your life, you know, if you, once you make the choice, go for it. So I'm just, I'm just open to all of it, but I, I just don't want people to think that there aren't other options. There's a much like you've discovered and I've discovered there's just other ways. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, I go through my day too, and I, and it is really about going slow with yourself, and sometimes gentle, sometimes rough. I mean, sure. it's, where, it's the nature of the wind, it's the nature of the elements, it's the nature yeah. of the planet, planetary affects, you know, and how they affect us. Um, yeah, we were talking about today being like a rough, just like jig jag day. Of what time this is going to start? What time that? You were on with Jason, and you know what I mean, and you had stuff, and yeah. Man, I already dro drove myself just from traveling. I already drove myself to exhaustion, so I'm just in recovery right now. I'm <laughs> just slowly recouping, you know. Because when I get out there, man, like it's like prior to going, I'll look at the energy. I'll set it up, you know. Oh, I'm gonna go to this place. Okay, let me send, let me send a path for myself, you know. Yeah. So that when I get there, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to go, you know, to, to take on the energy. And when I get there, I get excited. I'm like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Oh, there's this, there's that. And I forget the discernment. And I go, wait a second, I could do this. But let me let me not do that over there. Let me just do this over here tomorrow. Let me do, because, you know, one one thing that I've learned in life, if anything, is the kind of one day on and off. one day on, next day off. So okay. I might do something intense one day and the next day I'll take a break. Yep. Like today, chatting with you. You know, I might do an update on my channel of the Astro okay. for the month. And tomorrow I'll just chill out in nature, go to go to a river, you know, and just swim all day. Awesome. Just be in that, you know, like that off and on helps you not get caught up in that kind of roller coaster where you can send yourself into these situations like, you know, because one can send themselves into those situations like Don Juan would put Carlos in, man, I've done it. Yes. I put myself in energetic situations where I felt fear yes bringing my energetic body down to just just, to just my energy just seeping out just losing it just mm -hmm. from fear and it took me a while to even trust that that was was happening i was like oh no no it's my body you know i overdid it physically no <laughs> i i did something energetically and i got caught up in a mental zone that took me yeah. down that's gotcha. this happened recently man like I'll share this one insight to my travels because this happens to people, you know? So I was out there and, um, you know, just, it, it looks super mundane. You know, you're walking about the physical world. And I was just, you know, in a certain area in Peru. And all of a sudden I started like sweating. Mm. I started freaking out. Mm. It's like, wait a second, wait a second. It's not, it's not the altitude. I'm already going through that. It's something else. Mm -hmm. and i went back and i just like did my meditations and just like took it easy for a day or two 
and I caught myself in in like a, a dozing off state later the next day, just kind of like just grounding, just looking outward. And I was like, holy shit, I died in this place. Like, I don't know if I've died here exactly, but somewhere there's a death picture, something I've looked at and it's freaking me out because I feel like I've just jumped on that timeline mm. and I'm dealing with it right now. Mm. And this is what happened. And I got caught up. That energy got caught up. And I was like, what's going on? Am I going to, you know, <laughs> what, what am I going to do here? And, and then check in with my body. My body's physiologically fine for the most part, but it's the fear that's taking me down. And it's my breathing that's getting dysregulated. It's my nervous system that's slowly dysregulating. And I was like, wow, I need to look at this. And not that I needed to look at this. It's just that I needed to ground back and trust back into the earth and into the cosmic energy. Yeah. Bring that energy back into my body. Yeah. Just oh. trust, you know, yeah. man. Oh, man, brother. That's scary shit, you know. But that's how you discovered what you discovered. Like, in those moments, you 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 really understand when you figure it out. Like, when you re get yourself reset to the mother and you get properly connected to your battery source right because you're like disconnecting and we can yeah. we can we can literally destroy ourselves with our thoughts really quickly and, and the way that we project into the field what we're experiencing and the fear in which we're perceiving it and so all these different things become we can open our field up become so ultimately empathetic that we are dysfunctional in the world like i've, I've I work with people that have created the most dysfunctional story possible because of the empathy concept. They've become so empathetic, but that, that can end up creating the, all the complications that people, you know, just by creating that dynamic. So we're just so susceptible into these zeitgeist, the things that enter the zeitgeist and how they then, how we, 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 we connect to them. But the fact you were able to, I, I've had experiences where, I was in situations with people that were, I was, I was getting really spun and lost and losing my way and starting being careful. I was, you know, getting really undone and ungrounded. And I was able to, in that moment, because I got so terrified, I was able to go to the mother in a way that I never had before, almost desperately, but it served to be the most mo uh, memorable moment for me. In, in the presence of all these people, I, I I couldn't get away from there. It was just too many people. I was in some festival, you know, I just needed to be alone, but I couldn't be, right? I was falling apart energetically. Something was wrong, you know, or almost passing out, like the heat and needing ice and not being able to get it and all the dynamics. And you start to lose your nervous system goes into all these different dysregulated places really quickly. And you could even get pneumonia in the heat and start your body could start to shake you could get cold in 99 degree weather, like all kinds of strange things can happen because our perception is that powerful that when we panic into what's occurring, I think the assemblage point's trying to assimilate and move you to a place of revealing something really significant, but we don't know how to resource in that moment and we're trying to get ourselves back to normal perception. And so our resistance and our inability to acquiesce to what's occurring, right? It's almost like it's an ego death occurring, but we don't know how to ride it out. And but 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 then we do, right? We in the end that we we figure it out, and it's like a riddle. Yeah, you said it, man. And you're we have a similar kind of um, <clears throat> just just a similar makeup because, uh, I mean, it happened to me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, being where I was. Um, I got really high up in elevation and the side effects, usually I'm fine with elevation. I travel to South America a lot, actually, but this was pretty high, man. I mean, 12, 13,000. And, uh, and so I had an added symptom that wasn't usually there and it was insomnia. I wasn't able to sleep. Yeah. And so at the points where I got my power back, you know, like, like like coming back strong enough into my body to get the fuck out of there, to get on a plane and fly out, you know? At those points, man, I could feel my assemblage point. And even before, there were points where I could feel, I would, I'd be panicked a little, and then all of a sudden I'd feel into my body and just, just like, 
it's like I'm not still. It's like movements happening. Like I'm I'm somewhere I'm I'm in many different places at once. Like there's an intersection opening up of energy. And uh man, that happened several times. Wow, dude. And yeah, it was pretty amazing. And I pushed myself a lot and yeah. got to these points where I was like, okay, I've reached the edge. You know, if I push anymore, I'm gonna fall off this cliff. I'm gonna be in that situation like you were in where like there's people all around me. Mm -hmm. I need to be resourced right now. I can't process all this energy because it's our field trying to, pro when you're around a bunch of people, man, at a festival, you're, you're, you're processing the collective energy, what you're all going through, you know, especially if you're open head and your human design graph, you know, and that's a lot, man. The last festival I went to years back, well, I went to other ones, but the last big festival I went to where it was just crowded at first opportunity, there was a huge lake and there was all these like floaties. And I took a raft out and went into the middle of the lake and just spent hours and hours there, man. Because, <laughs> you know, the water, you know, water is like, that's memory. That's like some other world you're entering into. And every time I go into a lake, man, it's another world. I mean, there's another world of memories and realities of kind of interdimensional mm -hmm. intersections. A lot of the lagoons and, and lakes in Peru were were just energetic miasmas. Like there was one lagoon I went to that was haunted by some kind of siren. It was what the you know the people the locals were telling me, right? And I had gone to like to the lagoon prior to them saying anything. And I remember I was just meditating by the lake, and there are people in it, and people like kayaking, you know, doing stuff. And I just got this energy. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go in this lake, but you know, it is beautiful and we'll just enjoy the side of it. But it's just the energy's a little off. Sure mm -hmm. enough, I hear these stories, man, you know, cause it's, cause the energy's everywhere, man. Like there's spirits everywhere. There's you're, you're, we're constantly in an influx of energy shifts everywhere we go, you know, and we're not conscious of what, you know, how conscious are you of like where you're at that beautiful background where you're at that of what happened there in that space you know in all the hundreds of years that it's been there are thousands of years you're learning it as you're there your beingness is taking it in and processing it. you yeah. know it's almost yeah. like you don't even know what it's you're capable of in that in that space you know amazing dude that's huge yeah just the just dreaming and being in the presence of something and getting accustomed to a new place you're you go through some intensity you know it's like it's not your home and it's not your land and the land's kind of like pushing back and i mean i've had some heavy stuff i've had to spend some time with some things to work out a deal because we were trying to stay yeah. in a place you know where so these things happen and there's but there's healings that happen you can have like the land will you can do ceremony and have conversations and get clear and form a relationship but like don juan you know he would he would put carlos in the presence of these of the spirit of the spring, of the water hole, you know, or the spirit of the mountain, or the spirit, you know, there's, these are conscious beings, you yeah. know, very much part of making sure that Rachel and I keep getting places to live around here. Like the kind of places we're given, it's all guided. There's no way we, we you know, these things just don't even, so it just keeps being, you know, it's a really, that's how powerful this realm is, is that you're you're if you're listening then the doors that don't typically open open and you, you get sent to places to do work right a lot of people don't want that they don't want a home that's got work to deal to you people don't want to have to face some energy but if you face it like i used to be spiritually so scared of stuff like that of something a presence in a home like it would just fucking make me so uncomfortable right and i just lived in kind of a dysregulated state by being in situations of that nature kind because of, I was being forced to kind of be in situations like that all the time because of the people I was hanging out with and in a lot of levels, you know, psychedelics open that door and then shamans open that door. And then there's uh, drugs, it's like recreational drugs too, you know? And so all these entity attachments, all these energies to get used to and how you eventually just get, get so boundary that you stop allowing any of that spiritual warfare stuff to even be in your reality, but you still have to deal with the things in your direct inner circle. And 
um, that's where that's where the real work is. Is not a lot of people are trying to get high by having big events outside of their small react, like trying to trying to make it or trying to have connections or focused on things. But if they could start with their with their self and then their partner or their children and even their parents, as far as closure with yourself, like a, a lot of boundary dynamics are undealt with. And then therefore we go out into the world and we're just avoiding the thing that we needed to work on primarily. And it spent our whole life spinning our wheels, trying to fix everything outside of ourselves. There's so much there. That's, that's amazing because that whole, that whole um, dichotomy between your own personal world, world and the outer world and how you communicate with yourself primarily, then your family, your close ones, you know, and then those outside. But before I, cause I want to get to that before I want to, I want to have fun a little with uh, what you were talking about, about, you know, being with others and you know sometimes there's you know you're using drugs or sometimes you're and to expand too you know what i mean to expand to get in touch with these spiritual worlds and you're experiencing them directly um i've had so much so much experience you know and, and i've never done any type of um mind-altering drugs like i never have and yet I've, I've dealt with ghosts all my life man in yeah. fact the first hostel, the hostel I went to in Puno, just a couple of weeks ago, man, uh, I ended up talking to um, one of the girls at the counter who had gone to uh, a portal nearby, a Maru Maru gateway portal, which I had no interest in going to, but I knew about it. And I started recording her. She was sharing with me a bunch of stories about it. And eventually, after we had talked about, you know, all these areas and around Lake Titicaca and around that downtown Puno area I was at, she starts telling me, um, how do you feel about, you know, where we're at right now? Or this this hotel, what do you think about it? I said, oh, you guys got a couple, you know, you got a couple of freeloaders, you know, <laughs> around. And then she's like, where do you think they are? And I said, well, you put me on the first floor. I'm very happy on the first floor. Let's just say I don't, I don't detect anything here, but I'm not interested in going upstairs. If that's what you're talking about. She's like, yeah, second floor of this room. We never run out to anybody. You know, there's shit that's been happening to me. Like I go in there, lights go on or that TV goes on and shit. And I said, it's just, you know, it's just like a silly little gesture being, you know, it's not, it's not, good. it's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. So you, awesome. she's all, you want to go clear it for us? I said, <laughs> my vacation, <laughs> you know, a little, little sleep deprived, you know, dealing with elevation here. I'm good. You know, <laughs> I'm off, <laughs> you know, maybe some other time. You know, when I'm at higher spirits, higher strength. Yeah. Oh, wow, dude. Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. It's just, you know, it's, but it's, I love that, that you bring that up, man, because it's so, it's just really what language has to come to, like an everyday acceptance of, it's not just you and me here. There's yeah. other beings and spirits we're interacting with all the time, man. I mean, where I live here, there was a lot of mining, there was a lot of Native Americans. I mean, you think I don't go outside and like, and, t and and drop tobacco on the land to the spirits and respect, you know, where I'm at? Of course I do. I know, I know where I'm at, man. You know, I respect the spirits around me and uh, I'm happy I'm allowed to be here, you know? You too, man. So glad you, you're, you're conscious in that way and you can feel... I feel what's happened here as well. It's almost like parallel lives are almost like it's overlaid. There's something going on. So there is no time and it's just. And it's still happening. Yeah. And it's still happening. And it's, a yeah, it's, it takes getting used to being able to be open to all of it and, and not get overwhelmed by it. Like a lot of people get tripped out by past lives or parallel lives and it overtakes their psyche. They get too focused on it and then, you know, run from this, 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 everything that's going on right here. Yes. Yeah, you be able to have access, but. I, I think maybe, what do you think? I mean, I think maybe it's just a simple word balance. I know it's probably overused, but maybe totally. it's fucking with balance. You know, it's, it's never, there's no such thing as capital B balance. You know, we're always playing. We're always moving through up and down, you know, in different fluctuations through 
the dark side and the light side, you know, life and, and death, the darkness and the light. I mean, it's all like a fluctuation of beingness. We're always experiencing this intersection. You know, we're always coming to ourselves. Oh, yeah. And so to get back to like, what were you saying? What you were saying about communication, I was sharing with you in the email about how I read this book on control, on like um, how people control each other. Just, just it's a book called Controlling People that I'd read that I'd brought with me on my vacation and um, or my traveling. I'd rather call it traveling. I can make, there's no such thing as vacation, man. We're dealing yeah. with energy all the time. <laughs> You know, I, I wanted to cry about it at some point. I was like, man, I'm, I'm trying to relax. But I was like, nah, there's no yeah. fucking such thing as vacation. You wanted this. You wanted to go out and explore these areas once, twice, or the third time. You know, who knows how many times, you know, you've been here. And, uh, but but one, uh, some t takeaways I got from this was, and I, and I really appreciate this book, man, because again, it's one of those books that doesn't over-psychologize doesn't over fucking analyze it's just very simple and nice. the simple dichotomy the book proposed was this that human communication is either direct and authentic or it's not mm. or it's backwards mm. and it's something else mm. and i went through all these examples of the way people can approach or talk to you in backwards ways you know, and it's, and what it is, it's like a type of defining another person, you know, and we see this in movies all the time, man. We go through this every day where people are, are talked at. They're not talking to, it's not like, Hey, what's up, man? What's your name? Hey, I see you're No, no, it's, it's something else. It's something in reference to what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, you don't do it that way. Oh, oh, you read too much. What are you doing? You know, we're, you're out here and it's a beautiful day and you're here reading the book, you know? We're, we're, we can be immediately judged and defined and controlled just by a statement out of nowhere by someone we don't know or by someone we know. Yeah. <clears throat> and it can just shut us down, shut down the bridge of communication, of authentic, you know, empathetic, not in an extreme way, like you were pointing out, where like, you know, you're feeling everything so that you don't feel yourself anymore and you're gone. <laughs> it's just everything else, you know? So... Yeah, man. So that's that's awesome. what. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, that's what I'm experiencing. You know, I'm learning communication in a marriage, and I just there's so many layers to it, and it's the most incredible thing to to have, you know, somebody help you, and point out the things that you just can't see, because we're just all we're all just like. You know, there's just areas that we just haven't ever looked at. And those are where we're the most vulnerable, wounded. And that's where the most armor is. And so anytime we can get really honest about it, communication and dreaming is a form of communication. Everything is. Everything, the inorganic beings, everything's in communication. And it's just a matter of like how our field, how our energy field is, how how, how we care for it and and therefore what we're able to then um let go of so that we are not carrying the blueprint that is determining the dysfunction of the communication so that the communication is just based on the past how we communicate how we receive how we listen and so to to be courageous enough to unlearn and to face powerful people that can point out to you and your partner where you're not being able to you know so these I've never been so thankful for, yeah, just the fact that people are so gifted and 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 that they've taken care of themselves enough. And I don't need them to have all the things figured out. I just find people that can are good at one area and I just utilize them because I know they can help me, right? And so it sounds selfish or like a lot of my friends that has, they, they, everyone, they, the person they work with has to have the same conspiracy theories as them and everything's got to be the same yeah. or they, they won't connect, but that just limits your whole reality. And, and it, you got to be creative how to hack your way out of this emotional dysfunction that we all find ourselves in because we were trained by our parents to not properly gain access to the pain. So communication ends up being a reflection of your own honesty with yourself 
And so this woman I work with calls me to my pain and I'm, it's hard to get to. She's like sitting there holding space for a long period of time because I, I just, I'm not that dropped. I can't drop as far as she's asking me to, but it, she doesn't give up. And eventually, oh, all this stuff just comes up, man. And it's like, and then it comes in waves. And then I come out of it and I'm like a little kid just all tripped out because all this pain left me. And I'm just, I, she's like, there you are. Right there you are. And in, in that moment, I'm in my raw, real pain. And that's who I am. I'm not really anything else. I, I come on here and talk and explain stuff, you know, because it would be dysfunctional to just show up in that space all the time and just be like, right? <laughs> so I'm not saying we should live there. But I hope people are inspired to learn how to get there or be open to getting the help on how to get there. You know, never forget when um again again a uh vacation, right? Like a girlfriend wanted to drag me to Hawaii and I was like, oh man, this fucking everyone does that shit. What the fuck I would have gone there for? You know. And uh I finally I went out there and mm -hmm. I'll never forget like she was she was at some kind of we were gonna eat and it was like after we went swimming for like hours, man, fucking hours. And, you know, so long that we were each in our own zone, you know, we were each with the ocean and I'll never forget, like, I guess we, we different way we got separated or something. Anyways, I met them there and um, they were like, uh, wow, like you look like a different person. And I looked at myself like the bar had like a, a you know, bar restaurant had like a mirror and just all this fucking stress had just left me. Yes. And I was someone else, man. I was someone else. I was me again. Yes. I was like, I was like laughing and just like loose and just like cooled off, you know? And I was like, wow. Like mm -hmm. I was fucking, you know, I was just in the ocean. The ocean just took care of me, just cleaned up all that fucking mess that I was, you know, all that bullshit that I had allowed to get calcified, all that stress and worry and work and shit. And uh, it was, yeah, I'll never forget that, man. It reminded me. Of the power of, you know, and you said it too. I mean, tears, what are tears? Salt water, they're poisons. You know, we're releasing poison out of our body. And yeah, man, however we do it, like, and, and like the courage though, what gets me is like the courage that you and your wife have to bring in a third person. I mean, most people can't even allow that, man. They can't even allow it. But you bring in a third person who could be neutral, caring, just, just, you know, and start to, share little insights and as much as you can handle not not like not like a whole fucking you know onslaught you know trying to kill you just you know exactly things at a time over time yeah and, I, and my my partner might be projecting that she wants me to do more one-on-ones with her but i have to listen to my own my own readiness yeah you know i'm if i'm letting my partner project that onto me you know, so we all go through these stages and it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it is courageous, man. But um, the beauty of it is, is that then it teaches you how to do that for others. You wouldn't be able to know how to do it, like to the degree that will be needed unless you could do it. If you're willing to be that vulnerable. Yeah. You know, so it's an exchange. It's a, like a graduation almost like you get initiated through the processes. A lot of people try to skip that stuff and uh, pretend that they can hold space for things. But I notice that the more work I'm able to clear, the more the more I'm able to heal in the in these ways, the the heavier the things people bring up to me in my sessions now. Yeah. Because yeah. right now I'm able to hold space for the, the heavier and the heavier as I get lighter and lighter in a, in a weird way. Yeah, because your energy is not going to react. It's yeah. not going to judge. It's going to be like, oh, I know what that is. I've yeah. been through that, or I've been through something similar. And that energy's got to flow. I got to hold this space so that person's energy can flow out. Because, you know, often we're inhibited energetically by the other person. We can't even move through an emotion because the other person's stuck here. And they're not, they're not stuck just themselves. They're also holding that stuck energy in your space. So yeah. it's always that way, man. That's it's always that way. That's why you can't. I learned this. 
so early. It's like, this is why on some level when we meet people, when we want to bring in people to a certain level of intimacy, this is why you really pay attention to the way they treat themselves because however they're treating themselves, you're going to be treated the same way. There's no difference. Exactly. And, and, and you have, and you want, you know, as, as openness as possible because, you know, I'm forgiving of myself. I do things. I push myself. I, you know, I, I do whatever I do to myself and I let it go. I'm like, okay, it's time to let it go. I can't just judge myself and harangue myself all the time. I need to create, I need space. I need both the periods of calm and then I need the jostling about to get out those emotions and to get extreme, you know? And, you know, you're like that, like me, man. You like to go to concerts and get the energy out. I mean, I've been a metal musician for right. years. And what the fuck do you do in metal? You experience the most intense fucking emotions. Yeah. And you start fucking fighting each other. Yeah. You know? yeah. Not in a hostile way, but you know what I mean? But in a way where you're you're together, you're like... yeah combating those energies within you, letting them go. Amazing, dude. Yes, beautiful. Thank you for acknowledging that part too. I mean, this is where we gotta we gotta know ourselves in order to embrace the opportunity that's here. I think a lot of spiritual people miss out on on just being just living. They over overthink it or over spiritualize concepts and they don't follow their bliss or follow their passion. Cause that's where you're going to heal whatever it is, you know, but it can't be obsession. If it's, I mean, you go, you might go through a stage of being obsessed. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how you learn. It's going to hurt. You know, obsession is just that it's an instant lesson of, you know, it's just so much suffering and it's just so much based on our wounding. Right. We're just so, we all have these strange different. I mean, it's not that different. We're all pretty similar. So it's, that's why it's easy. You learn to hold space for people and even anticipate what they're about to tell you because you can see it. You can feel it. You know, and so you're not judging already because you've already seen it. There's nothing to tell me. I, mean, I, I don't even... I, it's more of a like... A, the When the person shows up to speak it, that, they're doing the work. Uh, I mean, they're... They, they, I, I serve as a mirror, right? So the courage that it takes to show up is 90% of the work. And then we just, we accept the process that then wants to unfold or we guide back into the feeling side of it instead of the mind. The, the healing happens in the feelings, not in the thinking about it. And so a lot of people want to analyze it all and it's just calling them back to the to the actual, where where are you feeling it? You know, going into the somatic and going into the, the blueprint of it and that's a that's where you get to know the different parts of yourself that have are hiding from whatever happened because we we had to in order to protect these we 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 isolated ourselves we got fragmented everyone has multiple personalities they just don't typically manifest into a situation where they play out you know in a way that you see in movies or in I mean, it could, but uh, we we get to be creative with how we do the inner child work because that is everything is kind of starts with the child. Um, you said something. I'm wondering, and it's almost like a a level of depersonalizing one's experience, and it's kind of what I. I've experienced in the metal scene, for example, like when you start fighting people around you, you know, in the pit or something, or just getting getting very aggressive, like it's not personal, right? Yes. It's just bodies like experiencing the intensity of the physical body. But with such love, man, I mean, I'll never forget, you know, I'm, just, I'm not a big guy. And so many times I get thrown to the ground, you know, <laughs> and stomped or kicked, you know. And so many shows though, like, someone would just grab me and pick me back up man you know that, that the love in that right and that gesture and that feeling and that body pushing me pulling me back up now nah, you're back in with us you know right. again you know <laughs> you know what i mean and uh and it's impersonal mm -hmm. and so when you're with another person it takes a very kind of special dynamic 
I don't want to personalize it again, right? It doesn't matter the other person. Just someone there who can hold the space means that someone there is in the energy with you and allowing of it. Because you can't fucking do something sometimes. You can't feel into your pain if the other person is saying to you, oh, show me your pain. But they're actually holding their energy down, holding your energy down. So there's layers to this, okay. you know? Anyone could say shit, man, and say like, oh, yeah, share with me your feelings. Anyone could say those fucking words. But is their energy body truly allowing of the fluctuations of your field and what that's going to light up in them? And at the same time, protect that. I mean, in my school, early on, I was at a psychic school, and we were taught to shut down our lower chakras like 80% when we were reading another person. So we could stay neutral, stay the mirror, and help that person release those energies as they talked, you know, as they shared, as they, whatever they needed to do. We could just work on the energy, bring it down, bring it out. We would do that for hours, man. Mm. It was just like you said, it could be like 30 degrees outside and we could be, it could be freezing winter and we were boiling. We were moving so much energy that we were just all like on fire, just like, oh, the best of the water, man. Oh, let's take a break. Oh, it's a lot, you know? Because we were allowing of the energy to move. And we were we were centered and grounded enough that we weren't identifying and getting triggered. We were just, we're, we're here for you right now. We're just helping you out. We're just helping you move the energy out. Man. That's it. It's good. Now it's my turn. Now we flip. Now we switch. But that's that's all it is. It's always a soup of energy. Mm. And it's what you've been teaching in your in your class, man. It's like I love what you said this week when you said most people hold the energy of their auric field down at the at the feet. Like most of it is just like there sitting and 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 then and you it was almost like you know it's the it's one of those moments of breakthrough. We're like, this is why we're doing the movements. Don't you get it? Like we're bringing up the energy back into our field to move, to deal with, to take in, to push out, to move it over here, to open this there. It all it all came to me this week when you said that. And I was like, wow. You know, we're not just fucking standing there doing some, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know. Whenever people go to the gym and move their fucking way, do this or that bullshit, you know, <laughs> we're not doing that. We're playing in interdimensional spaces, Absolutely. pulling information in and moving information out and taking on new information and bringing in the solar force energy. When you have us bring in the golden suns, we did that in my schools too, you know, bringing in the cosmic energy, bringing in mother's energy, you know, the, the mother earth energy through our feet, you know. It's man, it's all it's all that over again, but in a more dynamic way where we're moving through the suit, you know, we're swimming in it. We're not just suspended, stuck and, and drowned in it, you know. Awesome, man. So glad you joined and that you're getting it, you know. And it is those these these moments where it, it just it clicks. You know, you may have it, and so it, and there's just stages of this stuff. And it, it would look so strange what we're doing if people were looking on, looking, you know, and but it's so powerful when you don't care and you, you know, and you're open to doing these things that will eventually reveal, you know, uh, it's just a method that's saturated with other people's intentions. So it's just like, you're just, you're borrowing from that intent and it works because of it, you know? And so um, when you become fascinated with what is available to one's, life when that energy is 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 surrounding your cocoon and how incredible that feels to be insulated it's the same concept that jason talks about by you know being insulated from the collective right but it's 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 not the same because it's done through without without the use of the intellect right it's done through the energetics it's through the silence and the the opposite of the intellect um, so there's different ways to do this stuff. And, um, you know, people are very comfortable in their suffering. And their suffering is due to the fact that they're being fed off unconsciously. And on a subconscious level, they're they're frustrated and living their life based out of that frustration. 
which might manifest in like being run by their genitals. You know, like the, 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 the way in which we're controlled is through whatever the program, whatever level you're at, program is just going to control you as easily as it can. And unless you're willing to go through the, to the next stage to get to know the next programming, right? It's just going to, you just stay in junior high mode. Like you just, the program can control a lot of people all their life under one umbrella. And those of us that have the courage to come out from under that umbrella and go experience the next layer and then get past that one, it's only going to get harder. <laughs> Nobody wants to walk into the, toward the intensity, right? So how do you learn to become kind of wreck? Almost, it's almost like a fearlessness, right? Like that, that comes over you. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity. You realize that there's so much potential with this one lifetime for one individual. And, and then you stop letting other people kind of, I don't know, project into your field or hold you back and, yeah, with their energy, with their thoughts. Because cause, cause, cause you stop for one moment and all that comes in. And it's all this judgment and it's all this, oh, I got to do this so I can be seen this way now. And I got to do this that way. Especially with the layer that we have, you know, that we're, we're public personas. You know, we have a YouTube, yeah. we present, you know, and that adds a whole nother layer of how people deal with us or, or choose to and whole new levels of dynamics. But man, what you said is something that's been discussed recently and it's this whole another level of control where they're they're really revving up the way they control our like second you know third chakra whatever you know just sexual energies in our body and how they flow like that's totally controlled people are not even themselves man it's just like the parasites that that need that that energy right to subsist it's just it just takes over people that's yeah. just what I'm seeing. It's not even people anymore, man. It's just whatever. Those appetites are working through people, through these energies. Yeah, the hungry ghost, the 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 spirits of trauma, it all needs to, to move. So it's going to move. It's going to do something, right? And if we're not going to deal with it and heal it, then it's going to get, it's going to start to overtake. So going back to obsession or just any, we're just, we're really complex creatures, but we don't have to be. Uh, pure affection is available. We can return to simplicity. You can learn how to take care of your sexual self so that you're not, you know, there's creative ways to be with your power to where you're not being controlled in this, at least to the degree that is detrimental to your evolution. We're still just under these pressures and images. The, the recapitulation is deep. So you're going to get into stuff that you forgot about and there's still stuff in your field that takes time to clear. And until the recapitulation is complete, we're still subject to the stuff that isn't resolved. It's still playing out a little bit, right? It, even in, in the most advanced stages, even for Don Juan, he admitted that we have a companion for life. You know, it takes constant awareness, moment to moment, to be able to even begin to make the, the slightest little bit of change. Like we're not, we don't, Don Juan said that we're, there's a rigid bounds between what's possible for us, but our, our, we're capable of being as impeccable as, impo as possible within those rigid bounds. So the constructs in place, our character, our archetype, our avatar is in contract here in this realm. And we get to have fun with it. Shamans enjoy their lives immensely. They make fun of themselves and each other. And they separate their fear themselves from the all the all the collective fear, and they so they laugh, they enjoy life, they they find they they decode it a little bit, but they don't care about the you know they don't get attached to it, and and I think that's the freedom is that whether we end up in like the movie Cloud Atlas in the future, some transhuman future, you know we may have to that's just another obstacle course. We don't have to be a fear of what, you know, what, what the story is. And, and I think people are, in the truther community are very attached to the outcome instead of just totally excited about the challenge. Yeah. Instead of realizing we're just in another carnival, it's just another, you know, there's a bunch of games we could play, you know, <laughs> 
you know, there's this consequence and that consequence, but hey, it's still a carnival. It's still a big fun park, you know? And it doesn't, doesn't take away from the mourning and the pain and the suffering and the loss. I'm not saying we should not feel our feelings and not, you know, kind of even long for or 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 miss the way things used to be. That's all valid. We don't want to lie to ourselves about that stuff. Yeah, sure, of course. Part of it. Cause because it's emotional honesty is the key here. And um that's I believe deep breathing and emotional health is what determines our vitality all, over a long period of time. Breathing is what regulates temporality. I mean mm -hmm. it's everything, man. When my nervous system goes into panic, it's just about me coming in and breathing and moving it to a different state. That's Oof. it. Beautiful. Yeah, me too, man. The breath works infinite and there's so many ways. You know, like in the dark room dreaming, your breath has to quicken in order to stay with the intensity. And so people quicken. Yeah, yes. You end up breathing really quick in order to stay in the assemblage point shift. And so people think they they think, well, this isn't good. I'm not getting a lot of oxygen. But there's just other aspects to our being. And there's ways to move into different ways of interacting with this realm that don't require the same sorts of what what would be considered the the way to get prana appropriately and stuff so like you know carlos did all kinds of he was in a cave for 11 days and didn't even he thought it was just like a day and a half yeah i remember that one yeah any food nothing so the assemblage point will take us to these places where you move beyond the breath i think into uh, pure energy like breath even the breath is an illusion within the, within the side yeah, well, no one's breathing i mean <laughs> you know what i mean some something's moving through us but no one's really breathing. So even though the recapitulation feels like it's all being done with the inhale and the exhale, you develop this part of you that you start, you're actually has nothing to do with the breath. You could be holding your breath and still be achieving the recapitulation. So that, but that it takes a while to get to that place where you allow yourself to believe that enough to make it reality, I guess it's all placebo. So I'm just going to plug in something. So I'm going to turn off my image for a minute. Would you share a little in the meantime about, about, cause, cause you know, I practice this as well is, is doing the dark room dreaming, right? Would you share a little about that experience? Because it's, it's, I'll just share, I'll just share a little of mine, you know, cause I don't know too much and, you know, you can just kind of, what it is, is that for me, when I do the dark room stuff, because when I had when, you know, in Peru, like, I had to rest for a while and I was just doing recapitulation all day, just eating and recapitulate eating and just moving the energy, moving the energy. Okay. What's going on? What's here? And I didn't, you know, there were times where my mind would go a hundred miles an hour where my breath would go a hundred miles an hour where my breath would slow down where the images would speed up or slow down. I mean, it was, I felt I experienced all variations of that. So wow. switch that now while I, while I listen to you. Okay. Well, yeah, brother. I mean, the, the dark room makes it easier to recapitulate for one. So putting yourself in a small closet or even coffin or some sort of box, a recapitulation box, you know, right. and, and, and make it pitch black. Uh, it makes it so much easier to retrieve your memories and, and, and visualize them and see them come up. And then, you know, the dark room dreaming proper is when you just put yourself in a situation where you're not necessarily recapitulating. You're just emptying your mind enough that you can stare into the black, into the void. And you'll start to see, you know, these, uh, it's typically a purple fog show up at some area, maybe usually in the periphery or the corner. Yeah. And rather than try to like track it by looking toward it, you keep your gaze open. So you're just looking into the, everything not in one particular area and if you can your breath will start to intensify and you'll have to like you know in order to keep that gaze or keep that view of that purple um or anything you know when there was times where i was so open i would instantly encounter like a, an organic being like a little uh a little bean or something or maybe a, a shadow being you know there's presences that can show up especially in the wilderness or, in, you know, depends on what lesson you're meant to learn. Um, but, you know, I've had up to like 50 heads 
come inside of the room. Like, so I'll be in a dream. I'll fall asleep and doing the dark room gazing and I'll have a dream. And I'm seeing all these faces talking to me in the dream. And then I, I catch myself and come back awake and the faces follow me back into my bedroom. And I'm looking at all this stuff inside of my room and it's all purple. It's all made up of this purple smoke fog and it's just faces and they're talking, you know, and as, as amazing as that was, right. It's just, it's no, it's not a big deal at all compared to what shamans do. They get up and walk around inside of their room, which is no longer a room. And they walk through walls because they're inside of the dream and they break free of this construct by using the dark room just to step in and out of other worlds eventually. So it's like you could basically enter conscious dreaming without going to sleep this way. We used to take LSD and go inside of this huge under, we had a crawl space that was really tall and the house was on stilts on a hill. So it was just this room for storage. It was just wasted space, but we utilized it for exploring perception, going in there and just hanging out as a group of people on mushrooms, LSD, cannabis, alcohol, um, and incredible discoveries were made in there because we were with a really powerful man that could sort of attract all kinds of energies. I didn't realize that till years later that a lot of this stuff I was seeing wasn't because of me, it was because of him. But oh. because I became capable of seeing this stuff, you know, I was able to like get clear and then like take do something really unique that made it so that I'm like, I only open up to certain things now. So I have like say over that what comes in the dark room. It's weird. It's like I'm got my guides just got me in a sense. I I can trust every like and it doesn't matter either way. Like it's all just a blank canvas. Like eventually I'll be able to go like Carlos could recapitulate not only his memories, he could recapitulate Don Juan's memories and then the Wahulian's memories. Once you open up and realize we're all one, you can access other people's experiences through the recapitulation. And so this is just an infinite portal to go into memory and memory are dreams and dreams are other worlds. So memory is more significant than we realize. Like you were saying, or no, Jason was saying earlier today, people just show up here and they all of a sudden they have a memory that wasn't even existed. It was like, it like populates their field and they have these memories that aren't real. They just drop into this reality and, you know, they're like servants of maybe some order or something like my elder called them Sipu, that they go into other realities and they just enter in order to counteract or balance certain things that are going to happen in the future. Like Cro-Magnon Man may be that very thing. We don't know how it just suddenly came to be. Um, but yeah, like you said earlier, we are not alone. And the more we realize that and the more comfortable we learn, that it would be, it's very humbling. I take people into the wilderness and they cannot perceive the things that I can perceive. And that's good for them. They're protected. They wouldn't, you wouldn't want to open that up, you know, uh, forcefully. But eventually, we don't want to be limited and we want to slowly become more capable of having these interactions. Well, you said it, I mean, and especially, in, you know, we, we get that a lot in the negative, you know, with films and Hollywood, you know, there's so many stories, right? Where the child goes to sleep and now they're in this other world, right? But it's a child. How often yeah. do you get the real scenography, right? Which is like, someone on another level, someone mature and more of an elder going to sleep and waking up in another world and not being afraid, but rather I'm going to go take a walk now in this, my bedroom, which is now this total, you know, other world, right? <laughs> That's amazing. That's, you know, man, it reminds me of a novel from the late nineties where I'm forgetting the title right now, where the main character, they bought this house. Okay. And there was this room in this house and, and they bought the house like this, but what it was is there was this room in the house, but it, it seemed to not be contained by space or time. Mm. So the man of the house would go in every night and he would 
just walk and walk. And every night he would walk further and further into it. And he would all of a sudden start going up stairways and down stairways and across long fields of space. And <laughs> it's just, he was just colonizing, right? This like imaginative right? World inside of his house, just like a room, right? And the same thing you're talking about, right? And I love this novel because, because of its ending. So, you know, the wife was getting worried and worried, you know, every, every, every day, you know, he goes further and further and then, and he comes back out and he's tired or he's this or that, right? And then finally at the end of the, near the end of the novel, the character goes in so deep that he just collapses somewhere in this dream room. And he's just like lost and he can't get back this time. And, and the wife just enters the room and sees him there on the ground and just takes him in her hands and just holds him and brings him back. Oh, wow. oh, what a beautiful, horrible. what does that say about space and time and the void yeah. and the capacity of women to enter yeah. in, you know? <laughs> Oh, dude, that's so cool. So it's so funny because, yeah, bro, like the this under the house place that we were in, we called it Narnia because the way to get to it, you had to go into a closet and you go through the end of the closet. It's just like skinny little and there's a door and it opens up into this world. And we we did we that room became much bigger than it really was. And, it, and there became, yeah, many, many places I, I couldn't feel my feet when I was walking in there. You know, we, we were walking in the dark and I was, my feet were being guided. Like the gate of power can happen not only in the wilderness while you're running, but just like the slowest walk. Like, so these assemblage point shifts is what they mean when they talk about people walking on water. And it's, it's not what we think it is. It's not like the physical world. It's done through, you know, a very unique state of perception, which everybody observing would have to be in on and part of in order to experience and witness these things that transcend the physical. Yeah, right. They have to be on that same frequency and that's it. Because it's a space. Each space is its own frequency. It's a world. Yeah, Slade House uh, by David Mitchell is a great book about a house that has many aspects to it. And, you know, and I believe that. I think homes are, there's consciousness to creations it's not just spirits occupying homes sometimes sometimes you're dealing with the actual home you know or the land has has merged with the home right so we just we get to bring more magic into these things and stop treating everything like a kind of just like dense materials and it's just it just and then then like if you're gonna move like i'm moving into this home right now and it's like it's work to 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 to, to make it mine you know, to to have to spend some time with it and yeah. infuse the walls and the ceilings and the, you know, I don't have to, but I choose to because of how then it creates a buoyancy, a connection. It's, it's, you, you, you bond with it and then it, it, it communicates its needs. It'll start to tell you, Hey, nobody's dealt with this part. You know, it'll, it'll act out, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, Oh no, but, that's what you want. You want to know what needs to be dealt with now, right? And so through communication, even with a partner or a house or even a group of people, you open that field up for getting to know what's needed so that, yeah, it's it's like a, I overheard someone say this recently, a buffalo intuits to go into the storm because it knows that that's the fastest way through it. Can't even speak. Doesn't deserve any words for a while. Just that statement alone. Yeah, I think we'll, uh, it's a good way to close it, man. It's yeah. good talking to you, bro. Yeah, you too, bro. Thank you so much. It's been great. Um, I'll just remind folks here, uh, here on this property, we're, we're going to have uh, a workshop to cover in the Castaneda material. You're going to do some, some of the magical passes that I'm certified to teach. Be doing some more deeper shamanic slower movements uh and some really cool theater work where people get to work through some maybe storylines from their past in a collective group be doing some energy work like shamanic martial arts almost where like start to play with that that side of movement where it's 
um, yeah, a little like keto almost. Um, it's, and Rachel and I will be offering a third day option. So two days, August 31st and September 1st. And then Rachel and I will do a thing the next day for people that want to stick around. And then I'm going to take some people into the mountains uh, for a couple of days as well. So, so a lot of opportunity. Um, and then my online courses are continuing. And Rachel and I are going to offer an online course for August, just the two of us for four weeks. Um, so reach out if any of that's of interest, everybody. Mario, I hope you can, you know, continue with online. You're, I'd love to hear from you too. If you feel comfortable sharing, your voice is valuable. So if you ever want to, you know, pipe in during the, the classes and stuff, we'd love to hear from you and really appreciate you coming on today, man. Yeah, appreciate that, man. And just to let everyone know, I'm not doing anything this month. <laughs> I'm just resting and recouping. Uh, yeah. No interest, no, no readings, nothing. I mean, maybe I'll do my, uh, you know, my, Astro for the month uh, later today. And, uh, but maybe August, I'll get back to work. I already have like a list. So <laughs> uh, to get back, uh, forgive my laziness, forgive my it's just recuperation <laughs> coming back to self, you know? Yeah, me too. I've been quiet because uh, Music and Sky was a lot. I met a lot of powerful people and had really amazing talks. And it was a lot of driving for me and a lot of powerful transformation. So, but I'm excited to, yeah, get my website a little more clear as to what I'm offering and then uh, just start promote. I'm going to, you know, be making sure that people know about this stuff. I'm going on Alex Zek's uh, podcast on August 6th. So um, that's going to open a big door for more people to come into this work. So I look forward to that as well. And um, let's do a talk on your channel soon. All right. Joel, thanks so much, man. It's always amazing. Michelle. Much love, everybody. Uh, See you next time.